Hello student, welcome to one more session of Analog, Analog and Digital Electronics. Uh, this is Vasan Naik from Kendra Engineering College. In this session, uh, we will discuss the important concept uh, that is known as uh, parity checker, sequential parity checker. What do you mean by parity checker? What is exactly parity checker? When the binary data to be transmitted serially, so extra bit is added frequently. This extra bit is called as a parity bit. This bit is added uh, in order to make either odd parity or even parity. Odd parity means number of ones in the uh, world is odd or even parity means number of ones is even. For example, we will consider now this data. Here you see we have <coughs> 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 7 zeros are there. So, I will add 8 bit as 1 to make entire 8 bits at odd parity. Here you see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is there. I will add 8 bit as 0 to make the parity bit, uh, uh, in, to make this uh, entire 8 bit data as a odd parity. Similarly, here I will add uh, 1 because here 4 ones are there, that is even. I will may add one more 1 here to make this as a parity bit. So, odd parity. Here, to make odd parity, I will add 1. Here, to make odd parity, I will add a 0. So, <coughs> so, suppose if any single bit in the 8-bit world is changed from either 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, the parity is no longer odd no longer word. Thus, if any single bit error occurs in the transmission like during the serial transmission with odd parity, the presence of this error can be detected because the number of one bits in the word has been changed to or changed from odd to even. So, this is applicable since this one parity, this, this, this one is applicable to single bit only. Now, simple a sequential parity checker circuit diagram is shown here. So, this is a simple parity checker circuit diagram with the uh, data input uh, that is shown as x, the block diagram of simple parity checker, data input is x and the output is z and uh, uh, clock is given to the uh, parity checker. So now, depending on the value of the x, uh, whether x receives, uh, uh, x contains z, uh, like odd number of uh, ones, uh, then the output should be uh, z should be 1 or x contains uh, even number of uh, ones, uh, then the uh, z is a uh, z is a uh, 0. So, uh, so the state graph of this uh, parity checker is shown here. So, here there are two state uh, that is whether z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 1 uh, that is that is uh, the two, two states are s is 0 and s is 1. s is 0, s will remain in this state, uh, s will remain in this state as long as uh, uh, the value of x is equal to 0. That means the uh, input data uh, contains uh, uh, odd number of even number of ones. So, when the input data contains odd number of ones, when the input data contains odd number of ones, then this will change the state from S0 to S1. And here it will remain in the state that is uh, odd parity as long as it, re it, re it receives the input data is equal to even number of ones. When the input data it receives odd number of ones, then it will move from here to the other state. Here to the other state. This is the state graph of a parity checker. So, this can be So, here as indicated in the state graph, if the circuit in the, like if the circuit in the state is S0 and x is, x is equal to 0, the circuit must stay in S0 only because the number of 1 received is still even. However, if x is 1, x is, x is equal to 1, the circuit goes to state 1 because the number of 1's received is that odd. Similarly, if the circuit is in the state 1, 
odd number of one is received and uh, and uh, zero input causes no state change but if one causes the state to change from s0 to s0 because the number of ones received in this uh, year is uh, the number of one received makes the uh, total uh, this one is one sorry total uh, this one is a even parity the following the table shows the uh, like a state table for a parity checker here present state next state and the corresponding output uh, you can see here now you can see this can be implemented by using a simple parity checker can be implemented using a simple d flip flop here here you can see the t flip flop here you can see the input is given and clock is given to the flip flop output of the flip flop is z and the corresponding waveforms also you can see here the color this is the corresponding waveform uh, when x is equal to 1 due to the negative edge of the clock uh, so uh, due to the negative edge of the clock here due to the negative edge of the clock uh, sorry due to the negative edge of the clock the value of x is equal to 1 uh, initially output was uh, in uh, even parity state so here yeah, now it will move to the odd parity state uh, odd parity state because the uh, because it has received uh, input is equal to 1 and the next input is 0 so the output uh, remains in this state only in the state only so where at this instant during the negative edge of the clock at this instant once again you see the input is equal to 1 now it goes to odd par uh, the output goes to 0 that means uh, it will move the state it will ch ch change the state from uh, s1 to s0 s0 like e1 parity and uh, at this state at this at this state this one the output input is equal to 1 so output moves from uh, state 0 to state 1 so in this way this uh, parity checker works so parity checker is the important application uh, that is used in uh, uh, to check the error uh, so actually the parity checker will check uh, with single bit error and two bits error also so students we have covered in the previous session uh, some of the example related to mod 6 counter in this session you will see the self correcting counter here you can see the self correcting counter so the diagram shows the self correcting counter so initially it starts at 0 then 0 1 it moves to 0 1 state 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 this is the mod 6 counter but but in between if the counter goes to 1 1 0 or 1 1 1 it should move to 0 0 0 so this is called as a self correcting counter so here you can see students you can see here the diagram corresponding diagram uh, sorry the corresponding diagram and the transition table the transition table is constructed by using excitation table so here students you see the present state is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 and the present state 0 0 0 next state is 0 0 1 0 0 1 next state 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 it should go to 0 0 0 and 1 1 0 it should go to 0 0 0 and for 1 1 1 1 also it should go to 0 0 0 this is a self correcting counter so when you solve this one by using uh, uh, when you solve this one by using k map you will get the expression and based on the expression based on the expression based on the expression here you can see the based on the expression The value of da this is the value of db and this is the value of dc so we are using three flip flops here da db dc and the counter design is shown here by using three flip flops so this is the counter now next problem is design a synchronous modulo 3 counter with the following binary sequence here students you can see here the following sequence is given like counter sequence is 0 1 2 0 1 2 So this is called as a modulo 3 counter. It counts from 0 modulo 3 counter. It counts uh, uh, from 0, 1, 2. After that, it should uh, repeat. It should uh, uh, proceed to uh, 0 state and from there 1 and 2. So uh, to design this one, uh, we need a number of flip-flops, like two number of flip-flops. So uh, you have to construct the transition table. From transition table is like uh, present state, next state, and if you construct by using uh, uh, JK flops, then the input for the JK flops are JK and JPKB. So you have to construct the transition table by using excitation table. Once the excitation table is ready, then uh, 
uh, you have to solve this one that table by using kmap and this is the diagram for a uh, uh, modulo 3 counter this is the diagram for modulo 3 counter so with the students we have completed the counter chapter so if any uh, problem or if any issue please mail me to my mail ad address thank you